We're back here on the dump, but boy, is it looking different. Yes, we had another message from our viewers, Mary and John, and they shared with us that things are changing fast here. And today there may be some noise, because although we're here early on a Sunday morning and it's glorious and the sun is shining, the machines are working right next door to us on the next field. So we apologize if that interrupts any of our transmission, but it is certainly changing. In fact, there's a little tump behind me by here, which is the only raised piece along this whole area. It is just getting flattened by the day. So will we find anything? Well, we can't guarantee that we're going to find things, but we're pretty confident that we will. And I know there's at least one surprise coming up in this video because I know that yet again, the generosity of Mary and John has shown through because they've left a bag of goodies here somewhere for us. And in there, there's a special gift for Caroline. You'll see that during the video. recognize some of this so there hasn't been a lot of movement in this area but things do get pushed over from the top now that there is all pretty new I think but then you find the odd and interesting thing as you're walking along there are lots of jars I won't pick any of those up at the moment and oh I saw that before and now somebody's smashed it even more than it was smashed oh there's a little is that a horseshoe no I think that's the heel of a child's shoe from one of the hobnail shoes and these were the heel supports I think I can't quite tell because it looks like it's sort of rounding in at the ends I think it's probably a heel rather than a very small horseshoe for a little tiny pony what do you think let me know in the comments is that horseshoe or the heel from a child's shoe from the Victorian times oh, there's something written on that 12 I wonder what that is oh look Oh, it's one of those really lovely Victorian tiles from a fireplace. Oh, I love that. Shame we can't find a whole one down here. We find bits, but never a whole one. Now, I wonder if that came down with all this rubble from somebody who's doing up their house and clearing all the old things out, or whether it just bounced down from the very top up there. Right. Oh, look, I can see a bovril jar. Always oh, nice treat to find a bovril jar. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, well, we're popping back down in this little hidey hole. And lots of sauce bottles, as always. Oh, what's that? What's heavy? No, it, that seems to be some sort of ceramic wheel, possibly off a chair or a table. I'm going to take that just because I like it. No particular reason. And if it is off a chair or a table, it would have needed four. I think there's something written on the end there but I can't be sure if you want to find out check our live show nine o'clock every Saturday evening UK time where we clean up our finds and you'll be able to see what that is we also have a quiz and a chat and a lot of fun see you there oh I can see some colour china and it looks like it's got a character on oh yes it's a little character I have no idea what was on the rest of it Probably a little child's tea set, something like that. It looks like it's off a teapot, doesn't it? This is where the handle would come out. Yep, I'd say that's a little child's teapot with one person. Oh, one with half a label. Oh, something with half a label. See, oh. that would have been a lovely label. Mm, what is it? Can you read anything on it? No, I... Strength, 
cream, Irish cream, I think. Irish cream, now that makes mm. sense, doesn't it? Because that does look very much the shape of a sherry bottle. It does. So it could be sherry, quite possibly. But I just left the vintage label on there. Mm. Now then, I noticed that Caroline just picked up a piece of nice china with a nice pattern on it. And don't panic, folks. I know people are now writing in the comments, where's Manky? He's gone out of your pocket. He's run off over there because he's so excited to be back on the dump with us that he has set up a game of plain or patent. Oh, let's go play plain or patent. Oh, look at this handsome young panda. Yes, he's very proud of his find. Stand this way so the shade isn't in the way. And oh, oh he's right. found this lovely little bottle, which I think was possibly perfume oh, yeah, or something. It's got, it's got little handy hold things on the side mm. to make sure you don't drop it. And very thin. Mm, something written on the bottom, but again... They obviously we'll, don't want to give you a lot of it. No. We'll tell you on the live show what that says. If anything, it could just be blobs. Right, but so now we've got to be or patterned and there's such a lot. Well, I'm going for this one and saying patterned because it's got some writing on the back. <gasps> Ta -da! It's plain. One to, one to me and monkey. I'm going for patterned on this one because there's a little bit of pink there. Ah, look <laughs> at that, isn't that beautiful. That is one of those, they stamp the design and then they hand colour the flowers afterwards. Very rarely on these cheaper pieces is it even vaguely trying to stay in the lines, but it's very pretty. Right, so that's, that's one, one to you. To Put that over um, there then. Um, patterned. Oh yes, it's got a, some sort of strange dotty pattern on. Oh. And this one, should we go for plain? No, I'm going for patterned. Oh, it's plain. Oh, we're doing well on the planes, monkey. Patterned. <gasps> yes, it's patterned. Oh, three, two. Right. What should we do with this one? We go for patterned. Oh, yes, it's patterned. Four, two. Oh, this bit of tile, I'm going to... Is it one of Phil's tricks? Patterned. Oh, it's not. It's a bit of plate. Mm. Very square. Um, Plain. I, I don't think we can win, Mank. Yep. So we've got six, we've got two, Monkey. Patterned. Oh, yes, look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? Sorry, Monkey. Oh, I picked it up and turned it over. Oh, well, that's one for us. <laughs> yes, you can have that one. We get three now to your seven. Um, Patterned. Huh. Oh, All right, patterned. so we've got three to your eight. And finally, this. Patterned. Yes, it's patterned. Okay. Three, nine. Not quite the best result ever, but for those with long memories will know, for me and Pan Mankey is certainly... <laughs> for me and Mankey is certainly not the worst result ever, because Caroline has completely whitewashed us in the past. So we got three to Caroline's nine, so congratulations to Caroline. And congratulations so. to Phil and Mankey for getting three right. Thank you very much. <laughs> the birds are very noisy this morning, trying to distract me from my finds, I think. What's this? Oh, I think, I could be wrong, I think that's a door handle and that's where it was attached to the door, one of those pulley ones for the, I don't know what you call them, ball catch, is it? You pull like that and they used to have glass doors with like frosted glass in. That's what I think it is, what do you reckon or am I completely wrong? Do you know that's something else, unrelated? Right, let's go for a little wander, see what else we can see. Oh, there's something cone shaped there. It looks like a carrot. Oh, look, it's a really old-fashioned Christmas light. Oh, it's a shame there's a hole in the back, but that's not a problem for me. Oh, I love that. Oh, no, I'd love to find a whole string of those. Can you imagine how glorious that would look in some craft? Oh, and look here. Oh, I'm finding lots of things at the moment. There's another bit of one of those beautiful tiles. Oh, that's lovely. I like that. It's actually got some glazing down the sides. You don't always see that. Oh, shame there isn't more, obviously, but still, great, because Phil likes to stick these into those frames and make little displays of all the bits we find, so that'll be perfect. Ooh, you can see my shadow there. Oh, ooh. Now that looks interesting. It looks like somebody's actually picked this up and knocked all the dirt off and then just put it back down because they didn't want it. Look at that, it's a brass clock mechanism and it's very clean. That's got to have been cleaned off by somebody in the river. 
and then they just put it back down because they didn't want it or perhaps they got too much and they decided not to carry it but I'm sorry that is coming with me we have to leave some bottles behind it's lovely Got all those cogs and so look here some sort of mechanism -y things oh is that a donger sounding the alarm that could even be of a grandfather clock couldn't it oh I love it have you seen this Phil look at that somebody's cleaned that that's not straight out of the soil is it possibly not because I would have Usually we find them yeah, all so full of dirt. There would be at least little stones and things. Well, some, that's very kind of somebody. They left and it and cleaned it. The only other possibility, it was in a bag of rubbish chucked in here, and when the digger pushed oh, it all, yes. it fell out. Mm. That's a possibility, but um, very clean. certainly looks cleaned up. Is there all brass? So I take uh, it. It reminds me of the clock I tried to fix. Yes, it didn't look like that when you started, did it? It looked no, like a clock. It's, it's, it's still all there though, in a big cardboard box. Yes, it looks like a pile of scrap metal now, doesn't it? Slightly, only slightly. Oh, what have you found? I'll show you now. Um, um, if oh, I put that down a moment, there. and then I got, got you a nice oh, thank faceted you. jar because I know it's you like those one. for yep. your craft. Um, look at that one. It's got a couple of initials on it. So R oh, and R, I think. Or R H R, maybe. Is that an oh, H? Oh yes, in it the could middle? be R H R. What do you reckon, everyone? Do you recognise this bottle? Is it something? That's what you've I'm had? thinking. Somebody may have owned whatever mm. was in that at some point. They might have done. Yes. Yeah. So if you know, please let us, leave a comment and let us know. There you go. And, oh, horseshoe. Now, we thought found something that may have been a small one, but I don't think it is. But that is definitely a horseshoe. Oh, that is definitely not. A, if that's off someone's boot, I don't want to bump into them no. down here. <laughs> They're a giant. <laughs> Let's move the sun over here, and that way then I can see your face. There Hello. we go. And two other little finds. Mm -hmm. This one. Oh, purely because it's half a neck, but it's still got the stopper <laughs> yes, in. Yes, we're not interested in the half a neck, but no, the stopper will be good. No, but I good. thought, nice to show it in situ, as they say. Yeah. And folks often mention, good grief, how do those things survive? Because it's crazy, because you already picked up a marmite jar, which is pretty indestructible, and it was broken. And yet I picked up that oh, little wow. glass tube. It's still completely And you can see hot. it's been tarnished by years in the, in the ground. and. Mm. But it's just a tiny, lovely. Well, not two because it's got a base to it, mm. but it's a little tiny glass pot. And I don't know if people can pick up just how fine the glass mm. is on there. And it's whole. So I think that's absolutely amazing. Very really nice. Ah, oh, use teacup without a handle and crack. So I think we leave that one there. And I think I've seen this bottle before. The Philly Limited, and it's. Bolton and Sons. I'm sure I've found one like that down here before. Possibly have. And uh, we've got you know, lots of little brown jars. Screw tops. Right, oh, it's another brown screw top. Oh, it's just quite an amber one, that. Little tiny paste pot. And let's have a look. Oh, there's a little bit of some sort of plastic toy. What's the front of it? Is it the front of a car? Yes, it is. Oh, that's nice. On a track, something like that. Oh, that's interesting. What's that? Well, that's a can of pop. All right, I have no idea what that is. Looks like a floppy mushroom. The top is metal, but this bit is like a tube. Hmm. Do you think it is a proper fairies mushroom, or do you think it is part of a car or something like that? Because of the tube, I tend to think it's probably part of a car, but I could be wrong. Pop that in my little pile. Oh, oh! I wonder if that's the other side of that little car we found. Let's go have a look. Thank you. Go look at the proportions. Um, no, I don't think so. The thickness of the plastic is different. Oh, that's a shame. If they went together, that would be really interesting. Oh, I like that. It's a cute little pot, isn't that sweet? Like a honey pot. Oh, there's a toothbrush. I'm not going to pick that up. Ooh. Ooh, little bottles and jars, bottleneck. Oh, that's a nice bottle. Is that a flask shape? Yep. I don't know why, I just like flask shaped bottles. Oh, here's another piece. Oh, no, it's got a piece of metal on it, but no wheels and a hole in the bottom. But that doesn't matter. Let's see if that fits on. Eventually we find something that joins up to this. Do you think that was a trailer on there? Or do, oh, that might have gone with that. Yep, I'd say those are the same plastic. I know it's not very well, 
But still, it's nice to think. I wonder what child played with that. Is that? No, it's a twig. Very pretty twig, but a twig. Right, back on up where we were. We oh, I think we've passed that by last time. What is it? What's one of those light switch? Well, it fits in the light fitting, and then you hang your light bulb there, and you can put your eye in or something in there to do your eye in. We find a few of these. Ah, here's a Jiffy Lemon. Now, I like these because I like some lemons to put on some of my cr summer craft, but they're very expensive to buy false lemons, so I'm keeping all the ones I find. I'm hoping to put them into some sort of condition that they don't look too bad, and I'm going to use those on a summer wreath. That's my plan. Oh, what have you found? I was just trying to clean this off because it got co and B. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to make out, see there's See, a bit of a mortar on there. L. Could oh, be, it's a London Brick Company. Could be London Brick Company, yeah. yeah. So I was thinking, because so. there's a mark there. Mm. But um, that's it. Very heavy. It's one of those it is. It's a, engineering. Is it they call them yeah, engineering bricks? I think so. And it's yellow mm. cream as opposed to the traditional red. So a bit different. Yep. Oh, nice find though. You do like your bricks, don't you? I do. I actually get to say, I found a brick. Well done. Ah, now lots of things have been tumbling down there. That's how I like to find things. And that way then you haven't got to dig all oh, right up there. I'm sure I can see a little plastic trumpety thing. Don't know if we can get up that high. Let's have a look on the way up. See what we can see. So we've got some bottles and a pen. And oh dear. Oh, I don't think I can get Ah, I'm sliding back down. Let's see if we can get that. Ah, got it. Let's take it down and have a look. Oh yes, look, it's, I would say that's out of a Christmas cracker. A little trumpet. You can see when they're moving away from plastic things in um, Christmas crackers now, because this is never going to rot. So, yep, I can definitely see the sense of not putting plastic toys into Christmas crackers anymore. And oh, there's a bit of a shoe. Oh, before we do, is that a bit of pipe? No, thought it was. There's not a lot left of it. It's a little bit of an old Victorian shoe, probably a child's, I would say, by the size on that. Or a very small adult, because adults weren't very big because the nutrition was pretty poor. I was saying earlier on about Christmas cracker gifts not decomposing, and look at this. It's still in the ground. Let's see if we can pull it out. Oh, got it. It's actually a 60s ladies skirt you can see the pockets you can tell by the color and the design there's the buttons on the front well the button holes which means buttons would have been on there but they're gone but that is nothing to surprise me because people always took the buttons off things before they threw them away so this has been in the ground for 50 years and other than some damage there which i'm not sure how that happened it's still pretty strong, so that's going to be with us for decades and centuries to come. I was just poking around in the soil to see if anything came out, and this did. I think it's a glasses case. Oh no, it's like a little, I think it's a vanity case, is it? To put in like your nail scissors and file, things like that, or possibly a pencil case. It's plastic, and it, as you can see, still in pretty good condition inside. Look at the colour there compared to the outside. Hmm. Hmm, shall I take that with me? I think I will and see if I can do something with it. That'll be a bit of fun. Ooh, it's very crunchy. Hi there everyone. Just popped in to say if you've enjoyed this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Okay, let's carry on with the video. I've got a bag of treasure. Ooh. I got a bag of treasure. While you've been showing the folks along the ridge here, I went and collected the bag of treasure. Oh right, let's have a look what's uh, in there. Ah, now before I show you anything about the bag of treasure, mm -hmm. let me show you my two finds that I found on route. Go on then. Number one, oh, I like that. It's that's got the lovely. blueprint and the embossing saying the same thing. Puritans made, is it? Uh, M A I D it says. Yeah, or? Puritans made. Oh, that's nice. You've got the painting and the. Yeah. Um, pattern on the glass and I would imagine that's orange juice because of the orange peely look and I was very pleased that when I wiped this <laughs> to mm. look at the blue it didn't come off no because that can it happen. does sometimes if it's reacted with the chemicals in the ground sometimes you go like that and whoosh, it disappears but I think that's cute enough to warrant going in the bag yep 
and having done one of our regulars, as in I found a brick earlier, mm -hmm. I have now found a ball. Oh, well done, you've got the ball of the mudlark. There what is a go. mudlark without finding a ball? Now then, with regards to the bag of treasures, let me show Caroline what it is that was in the bag just for her. Because this is something John actually made. Are you ready? Ooh, show me, show me, show me. Can you guess? It looks like a Christmas tree made from horseshoes. Here we go. Oh, half horseshoes. And look at the bottom. A whole horseshoe. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, isn't that lovely? That is. Speaking my stand as you can see it, because I can get further away from it. There. Whoops. Get my shadow out of the way. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. So he made this himself? According to the email that I received, hmm? John made this because he works with metal. Mm -hmm. You may remember, folks, that I was on this dump with the three lads, Richard and his two mates, and one of his friends, I believe it was Jake, makes things out of horseshoes. Well, it turns out he's not on his own because John makes things out of horseshoes too. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, John. I'm really going to enjoy using that, and that's going in my Christmas display. There we go. Now, that's what Caroline's got. What a treasure. But I've got Ooh. a bag full of treasure too. So come on, over to the shed and let's have a look what John and Mary have left for me this time down at the dump. Okay, let's have a look what's in the bag of treasure. Now I've been careful while bringing it home and even when taking out that wonderful, wonderful Christmas tree made of horseshoes for Caroline that I didn't look in and see what I've got because again, I want it to be a surprise on camera. So without looking into the bag, I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna pull out the first item that I find. And here we have, what is it? Oh. That's rather interesting. Now I'm just gonna give it a little wipe over by you so that you can see the color. Look at the blue on that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's lovely. Obviously it's the base, the foot of something and would make a perfect plinth in order to set something on. So that is definitely a treat for me. Thank you so much Mary John for that. You obviously know what I like. What else do we have in the bag? Here we go, reaching in again. Ah. Oh. Oh, plinth number two. There we have a nice, neat plinth. You can see it in perfect condition on the underside. Will sit absolutely level. All I need to do is just grind off a bit of the edges there, and then I can put something on there, and I'm sure that will do a brilliant job. In fact, I may have something here that I could try on it now just to show you. Let's have a look. And just to give you an example of what things would look like on there, we have a lovely bit of blue. If I just move the blue over to one side and I have this little character, which I could put here, there you have the idea of how things can be displayed together. So watch this space and see what that becomes in the future here down at the shed. Let's have a look what else we've got. What have we, oh, we've got two here. There's something inside this little jug. It's a little cream jug that's lost its handle. But look at the spout on that, isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that a lovely form there? But what's rattling round inside? Oh, look at that. It's a little cat, is it? No, it's a little I'm not sure if it's a dog or a cat. Oh, that's lovely green, isn't it? Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at the green color on that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I like that. There you go. One instant piece. It's lovely how the colors contrast. Okay, off with the glasses, back in the bag. Let's see what else I can find. Right, to go with the little cream jug, we've got a teacup, or at least half a teacup. But this is beautiful. Let me just give that a rub. We'll clean this up proper for you on Saturday night's live show, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
Okay, it's another broken bit of crockery. Doesn't look so special that way round, I admit. But let me turn it around. And this time, at least we've got the handle. And what a posh handle it is. Now I'm thinking that if I can just trim this a little here, then I can mount it with the handle on display at the front and then display something from within this. So I'm sure either Caroline or myself are going to find a use for that gorgeous little piece of tureen. But there's more. Yes, they don't call me plinth and teapot man for nothing. And Mary and John definitely know the sorts of things I like. Because here we have a teapot. And if I just give it a bit of a wipe over here, just so that I can try and show you what it'll hopefully look like when it's had a bit of a clean. There we go. Just wipe a bit of the dirt off there. Just so that you can see the colour and the glaze. Isn't that lovely? Or a transformation from that to that. So we'll give that a good clean up as well. But again, there's more to this than meets the eye. Because this teapot may have a spout and no handle. But there's bits and pieces on the inside. And one of those bits and pieces is another spout. So who knows? This could become a two-spouted teapot. What else is that? Oh gosh, another spout. Oh, if we had, if we get one more, I think, I honestly think this would look good. A teapot with four spouts. I think if we could arrange the spouts around the teapot in this sort of effect. Come on folks, anybody agreeing with me out there that four spouts on a teapot and then something in the centre would look pretty cool. I reckon that would be one mean planter. Oh, I tell you, inspiration coming from the finds on camera. What have we got next? Oh, a cute little bottle. That's a lovely little bottle. Nice green one. That'll go nice in my miniature collection. And is there any more? There is indeed. What is it that we have in the pot? Oh, it's one of those. Hmm, wonder what that is. Hang on a second. Let's give this a bit of a whiten. It seems to be porcelain. I'll have to have a proper look at that after. And it seems to have been cheap. Now, 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 now. I think, I don't know what it'll be when I come to use it, but I think at this moment in time, Tell me if I'm right, Richard, Mr. Richard Serridge, my resident expert on all things insulators. That's the top of an insulator. Thank you for that. And I do believe there was one more item in you. It might just be a rock, I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh, hang on, no. The fourth spout. We do have the fourth spout, folks. There you go. That has to be a craft project to come. I have to put the four spouts on the teapot and get a plant in here because I think that's going to look stunning. Keep an eye out for that one, folks. That will be coming up very soon. And let me just check the bag and see if there's anything else in there before we go back to the dump. Yes, there is. There's one last treasure from the bag of treasures that was left on the dump for us by Mary and John. And here it is, folks. They've covered all bases today. Teapots, plinths, and now a melted bottle. What a cute little melted bottle. Isn't that a beauty? If you don't see it, you don't see it. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I love those things that have found their originality through the pressures and the issues that they've gone through. And this little bottle has had some issues. It's seen some pressure, but folks, it has come out. And in my eyes, that is a gem. So what a beautiful final find. We've got plinths. We've got beautiful melted bottle. We've not only got a teapot, but a teapot with four spouts that's inspired a future craft project. What a fantastic bundle of finds from our friends. Thank you so much 
Now let's get back over and see what else we can discover down on that fast disappearing dump. There is a huge part of the dump there that I'm going to take you to in a few minutes. And there are lots of bottles and jars and things. But first of all, we're going to go down there because you might be able to see about there. There's the water and we haven't been in yet. So come on, let's pop down to the water's edge. Look at that. Is this such a peaceful scene? You can see the reflections in the water. You can hear the rushing water because as we go a little bit further round, it's all rushing down a little natural weir, only about 18 inches. But it doesn't have big a noise and all the knotweed over there is starting to come back. We have terrible problems with knotweed here. But that water just looks so inviting. You can see just how thick the algae is in there. Just mix it like that and you lose all sight of the bottom for a few seconds. But I still think we should go in, so come on. Pop your wellies on, we're going in. Oh, now that is cold, but it's lovely because today it's very warm. We have to be so careful because it is really, really slippery. If you're walking now, make sure each foot is really settled somewhere safe before you take the next step. There, I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but there is a brick there. And then the water gets very deep very quickly, so we can't really go in any further. But it doesn't matter because, as beautiful as this is, look at the water rippling on the, or the light reflecting onto the branches of that tree. Although this is lovely, there are all those glass bottles and jars up there waiting to be seen by us. So come on, should we pop back up to the other bit of the tip and see what we can find? Oh, hello, Mr. Johnson. What have you found? No, and I found something that Monkey and I think it's interesting. Right. Or at least, should I say, useful. So but, what is this useful thing? Well, having said that, that's what we want you to judge. Is it useful? Is it nice? Is it beautiful? Or is it not? We have a theory. Yeah. We believe this is half of a chair seat. Half a chair seat. Which has washed down river, mm. has been thrown up onto the banking at high tide and has dried out. Oh, yes. I know it's a piece of old tatty wood, but I like that. So you can see a split yes. here where it was probably jointed Planks, together. And there's another piece there. Yeah. yeah. But it's got this rounded edge that comes right around here. And we just felt... Oh, yes, we could do something with that. Oh, there we go. It's unanimous, folks. The Johnsons all agree. This is worth keeping. On the way to the other bit of dump, I've seen something and it's green, so it could be verdigris, and it's round, it could be a coin. What do you think? So I thought, well, I'll turn the camera on and we look together. I want to save at the moment, I'm not going to rush. Let's have a look. Oh, I think that is a coin. It's damaged, the end's gone a little there and there's a big chunk out of it. I'm going to take that and see if I can clean it up. It's really thin, so it could be an old copper coin. Right, we'll check that out and let you know on the live show that's possibly rubbish, possibly something really good. Whoops, I'm going to look after that. Hi there everyone, just popped in to share a little bit of information with you. As and from June, there's a small change to the way we do things at Let's Go. The live show, Saturday night, 9 o'clock, will continue to be broadcast live and we will be here for happy hour. But if you can't catch us live, as many of our lovely viewers can't, then please just go over to the Kofi link and pick up the video there. We're purely moving it there because of the algorithm. It'll make it easier for us to grow the channel, which we are looking forward to doing. It'll cost nothing. It's free to go on to Kofi, free to watch. It's YouTube in another place. So please continue to enjoy, but we just wanted all of our lovely regular viewers who watch the catch up to know from June, pop over to Kofi and you'll find all of the live shows there, the whole archive. You can even go back a 12 month and watch if you wish. Okay, let's get back over to the video. Ooh, is that a little lid? Oh, it's a plastic one. It's off a doll's tea set. Oh, that's cute. It's a bit broken, I know, but it is cute. Very pretty. Look at this. I can see bottles glistening in the sunshine everywhere. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of them are going to be Fletcher's sauce bottles. 
But let's go have a look, see what we can find. Well, there's something with holes in. Now from this distance, and it's about there, I don't know if you can see it. Get closer, it looks like one of those bear growls. I don't know if it is, let's have a look. Well, it's not making a noise, but it's full of soil. I wonder if that's a bear growl. What do you reckon? If it is, We'll take it home and clean it up and see. I would love to find out that it is. What do you reckon, Phil? Do you reckon this is a bear growl? Oh, it could well be. Bear? It does look like one, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, the one where you tip it up and it makes a noise. But it was made in England, R, B, C and then F, C or something. Right, we'll clean that up and see if we can get it a growl. I've got a plastic lid. Oh, wow, it's a plastic lid. Well done. What's now you may be wondering, why have you taken the trouble to bring over a plastic yes, lid? Yes, I am wondering that. I'm hoping that mm. one of our viewers can identify what was in the jar that this large lid sat on because only part of the name that exists it looks like Erasmus was it yeah, Erasmus and I can't um sewing bow I don't, I don't know but perhaps someone out there will think oh I know what that was because so many times when we don't know what something is one of our wonderful viewers does so wonderful viewers it's yeah, your chance it? Please drop in the comments if you know what this brand was and what would have been in the jar, which must have been a sizable jar. Yes, it seems to say snaring bow. <laughs> so I don't know. Hmm, that sounds very exotic. I don't think it's bows. It sounds very Harry Potter, doesn't it? Oh, here's the bar the jar of herring bows. Mm. Or snaring bows. But um somebody will know, I'm sure, mm. because they so often do. But there we are. Time for you to help us, folks. What do you think it is? Hmm. Within time, or cheaply ex course the jar. I wonder what that said. Probably something saying about you've got to return the jar. Do you know what that says? Anybody got any ideas? I mm, can't really figure it out. Look at this for a pretty bottle. I like that. There's a flat piece here to stick the label on, and they've got all these uh, dots. Do you think that was Ribena? I don't know why, for some reason I got Ribena in my mind, but it may be nothing like Ribena. It's a very nice bottle though. I like it. I like anything with a texture or writing on. Much better than a plain one. And then, as far as the eye can see, we've got more and more bottles. Lots of broken. Lots, as I say, of sauce bottles. I'll try not to fall over. A bit of copper there. And we've got a yellow scoop. Spray jar, something blue. Oh, I wonder if that was a spaceship. Could have been, or a boat. Plus, it's the top of a boat. That's the thing, all the toys here are broken. I don't think we found any whole ones. Two bottles. Oh, very nice. Very different bottles. One little bottle, one big bottle. Got issues. Oh, yes. But the reason it's I mass. brought it to show is the shape. Yeah, the neck is lovely on it. And, of course, one of my favourite companies, CWS, all the way around the bottom. Now, this little bottle, that's got ah, something written around the bottom as well. Another one. It's another. Open and Sons Limited Caffili. Yep. Yes. I remember the very first one of these we found because we actually found two. I've never found any before. We found a couple of cents. And I found one earlier on, so. <laughs> there we go. There you go. So, there's Caffili bottles around you, but Caffili has a link to what I'm about to share because I know there are many of you who enjoy the history and of course we've done history in Caffili because we went to the castle there and I know a lot of you enjoyed that but today we're going to take you on a trip for a moment with a difference because we are going today share history literally in the making because we're about to go somewhere that by the time this video goes out, won't even exist. It'll be history. Because here in this part of South Wales, they've put on a trail of Snoopies. Yes, you heard me. Large, art-decorated Snoopies. I believe there's 115 of them. And it was Michelle Grady, one of our regular viewers and great supporters of the channel, who emailed me and said, Phil, they've got Snoopies where you live. And she's right. They've put them in Cardiff, they've put them in Porthcawl, they've put them in Caerphilly. 
So, 115? We're bound to find a couple, I'm sure, as we head off in search of the Snoopies who this weekend will be removed and in two weeks time will be sold at auction. So this is our chance to document the history of the Snoopy Trail. Quick, we better go. And here we are folks, back in the castle at Carthilly, place we visited before in search of ancient history. But today, of course, we're here for a very different reason because we're on the trail of the creation of Charles M. Schultz. Yes, in 1950, in October, Charles M. Schultz produced the first Peanuts strip. And after two days, he introduced a character who was to become known as Snoopy. He was Patty's dog to start with and then got adopted by Charlie Brown. And his name didn't get used for the first four or five weeks, but from then on, he was Snoopy. And interestingly enough, for such a great philosopher that Snoopy has become, he didn't actually share any of his thoughts for 16 months, because it was in March of 1952 that the first thought bubble appeared above Snoopy's head. And the rest, as they say, is history, because for 70 years, he's been entertaining and inspiring people with his philosophical ideas and cute concepts on life. And today, Snoopy is here in Caffilly and he's inspiring a new generation to think about their pets because the Dog Trust are using the Snoopy Trail to raise awareness of the work they do in protecting animals that are abandoned. So, let's go check out the trail. Well, I think that was amazing. You know, Snoopy has the power to put a smile on the face of children and a man in his 60s. I just loved it. So colorful, so beautiful. So many locations from shoe shops to libraries to the castle grounds. Snoopy was everywhere. And he doesn't just make us smile because for seven decades, Snoopy has been sharing, as I've said, his philosophy of life, which includes such wonderful comments as I don't have time to worry about the people that don't like me as I'm too busy loving the people who do or a little quip like I think I'm allergic to mornings and of course such deep and thought-provoking lines which crossed against the grain of society's thinking when he came up with his understanding of life which simply said, my life has no meaning, no direction, 
no aim, no purpose, and yet I'm happy. I just can't figure out what it is I'm doing right. Canine philosophy at its best. Obviously Snoopy was a student of that great philosopher Winnie the Pooh and after seven decades he is still inspiring, entertaining and informing people including Jura Caffilly as he does his wonderful work for the Dogs Trust. But of course, by the time you see this, they'll all be gone. Because there's going to be an auction in two weeks' time just down at the Coal Exchange in Cardiff where 40 of these models made by artists will be sold to raise funds for the work of the Dogs Trust. But at least we captured a few you, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing them. Especially Michelle, who wanted to see them so much and I promised we'd capture them on film for her. Okay, now folks, we'd better get back to the dump. What you got, Mr. Johnson? Here I have an example of something that looks very plain and very boring. Mm. Because it's another brown beer bottle. But every now and again, you just see a little bit of writing and a name of a place that you know, and you think, I think I'll hang on to it. So it's Webbs. Aberbeeg. Limited. Oh, Webbs of Aberbeeg. There we go. So, knowing Aberbeeg, a village not too far from you. I thought it was a nice find and not too large because no. as you know, as you've seen when we were over at the shed just now, uh, economy of space has to be considered these days. Definitely. But I think I'll take that and see if I can find a little space. Okay, okay. And while you were showing me that, I did spot this. And it's a weird looking thing. I think it's a doll's plate, a doll's tray or possibly a child's plate. But I, I just like it. And I think I can straighten that up, clean it up, and do something with that. So I'm taking that with me. I decided to pick this one up. Now, this is something I've seen a number of today, quite a number, and that's little ink bottles, mm -hmm. but with a screw lid. 1950s, somewhere around there. And it got me thinking, these are bound to be prolific because, of course, literacy was on the increase. So I suppose when you get to the Victorian time, although ink was important, not everyone was making use of it. By the time these were being turned out, every school child had their bottle of ink in order to do their work. So a little bit of social history and a whole one. Very nice. Ooh. What I, have you got behind your back? I have something that I know will be of interest to you. Of interest? Now I have to admit, it's beyond use and probably repair but I know you love your vintage fabrics. I do. And accessories. Hmm. So. Oh, it's a little, oh, it's a, an old bag. <laughs> As I said. Falling apart. It's in, it's not in the best of nick. No, it isn't. I think I've seen something very similar to that down here before. So they must have been the fashion and a few people must have had them. Well, similar pattern. Yes. Hmm. So there we go. I found the two bits, but I don't think they're ever going to serve their purpose. No, they're not very well, are they? <laughs> Look at that, there's a bottom of a shoe and there's a copper spoon. That's a nice one. These were copper and then they silver plated them, but there's not an ounce of silver plating left on that, is it? But it's pretty and I like it, so I'm going to take it home. Well, I'm having a sit down and a rest, but if you want to see more of this kind of adventures, check out the link, which is either up here or maybe up there, but Caroline will put it in on the edit and you'll be able to see so many other adventures that we've taken on dumps such as this. But for now, big thank you to John and Mary for their generosity, to Michelle Grady for the shout out on the Snoopies, and of course to everyone. Everybody who watches these videos, you are making this channel a success and please feel free to leave a comment because we love to read them. But until the next time that we're together, which won't be long, don't forget, have fun. Bye. Bye.